Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rumor Brothers today to fit some front slotted distal pads to a 2015 Range Rover L405. The first thing we're going to do is pop the bonnet and just take the reservoir lid off the brake fluid reservoir. So when you push the pistons back in to the calipers, the fluid level will rise. So if you take the lid off, it just saves it uh, spraying all over the place. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so we're just gonna remove this uh, panel here so we can get gain access to the uh, reservoir. There's just four little plastic clips. If you just unscrew them and just pop, pop them out, four of those, and then you can lift this panel, place that out of the way, and then you see the reservoir with the top. So if you just hold the, hold the little wire so it doesn't spin, open up the rest and all you need to do is leave it so that it's loose you don't have to take it off all the way and it's just so as the fluid rises when you push the pistons back it doesn't try to squirt the fluid out it just overflow the way we're going to jack this vehicle up on this four post of ramp is that we've got a jacking beam and i'm going to go under the lower suspension arm so there's no need for us to put the suspension into maintenance mode but to if you if you're going to jack it under the body or on a two post of ramp then you'll need to make sure the doors are shut um, turn the hazard lights on and press the light button and the unlock button simultaneously until the suspension goes to full ride uh, to full height. Once it's a full height, then it's safe to jack. Okay, so the first job we're going to do, obviously, is take the front wheel off. Once we've taken the front wheel off, we'll put it into a full lock so we can see the uh, the, the, the the pads a little bit better, and then we'll explain exactly what we're going to do. To remove the the, uh, the brake pads, which you can see here and here, we need to push out these two pins. And I'll show you a new pin in a moment so you, you know what you're dealing with. And uh, now these pins, because it's an alloy caliper and a steel pin, they do corrode quite badly within here. So they sometimes get really, really difficult to get, uh, to get the pins to come out. Then there's a center um, stabilizing bar, which has got an M8, which is 30 mil spanner size nut on that end. Then you push the bar out that side. I'll show you how to do that shortly. So first thing we're gonna do is get a punch there and there to try and push the pins through hopefully they're not too seized and they'll pop out okay so we've got a little punch now that pin has moved quite easily so let's see if this one does actually that one has moved as well now sometimes if these if these pins do get really really tight what you might want to do is put a smaller punch in the back tap it that way then tap it that way and just keep kind of maneuvering backwards and forwards if they get really really tight so they start to bend the pin uh, what i'll often do is i just get a little disc cutter i cut the pins off take the pads out and then get a longer punch going through as in that one a longer punch going through there so you can punch directly on the inside of the pin rather than punching on this end because obviously then you've got all the way of the pin to go and it's, it, it will eventually just bend the pin if it's see because it always sees it more in that side than this it's got a fatter bit of aluminium and also a spring clip on the end of the pin okay so this is the pin that, that, that sits in there as you can see and this is the, the spring clip that actually holds holds the pin in place in there and obviously steel again against an alloy caliper and they just corrode there and they get really really tight so it is just a case of you've just got to do your best to say if, if the worst comes to the worst cut the pin off get the pads out and put a longer punch directly onto the inside of the pin the center brace bar is just held in by say an m8 not that side so get your 30mm socket and just take that that bolt out of there now what I would normally do just get a little bit of emery cloth if you can and just clean these um, the, the the fatter surfaces of the pin there and probably sort of spray a bit of lube on it as well because you've got to knock the pin through the caliper so what, I'll, what I will do is once that uh, bolt is out I'll put a longer bolt in there like that so then you can hit on it dead cleanly and you're not going to break anything because you will get a new bar and a bolt in the fitting kit. So once that's in and as far as possible, when the, then you can take that bolt out, put a threaded bar in and keep knocking it till that pin comes all the way out. So I'm just going to clean it up now, put a bit of lube on it and then we'll knock it out. Okay, so I'm just going to get a bit of emery cloth, slide it up and just clean, clean it up. It's just to make it easy for yourself when you're pushing them out of the, uh, of the, of the caliper. So once you clean them up best you can, just put a bit of lube on. You're going to clean everything afterwards, so don't worry about the, because uh, we'll put in new discs as well, so don't worry about the, any of the lubricating oil going on the discs or the pads, because they're all going to get replaced. So I've screwed the bolt in the back there, and we'll just get a hammer, and we'll just 
tap it all the way out. I'll get into it better when I've got the camera out of the way because unfortunately you won't be able to see. So you'll tap it out. And what I'll often do is, well, we'll tap it out so far, lube it again, knock it back, and then just keep working it backwards and forwards so that you're, you're going to make it easier for yourself and also you're not going to damage the caliper. So you can see the pin is so far out now. Then we're just going to tap it back a bit and then just keep working it backwards and forwards, spraying a bit of lube every time until the pin comes out nice and easily. So you can see I've put a bit of threaded bar in to knock it out for that last little bit. So you will need to knock the next bit through. So I say again, clean it up as best you can with the emery cloth because it just makes it a lot easier when you're pushing it through that last bit of the caliper. So pop it back there, hit the end of the threaded bar and push it all the way through. Now these pads are seized into the calipers as the pins work, because obviously you've got the, the metal there, and that's an alloy. Now what we need to do is obviously get the get the, um, the, the the pads out of the caliper. What we could do first is put the pad spreader in, and then wind it up, and that'll move the pads and push the pistons back into the caliper. Do that a little bit at the top, a little bit at the bottom. And then what you might have to do, once you've separated them as much as you can do, in fact this pad's fairly loose now, looks that's not too bad, you can then either get some mole grips on the pad and pull them out, you can get a little bar in carefully and pull them out, or you can get several bits of equipment that actually clip into these pins here in the, in the pad, and then a little slide hammer comes out and then you can pull the pads out like that. But the first thing to do is get the pads all the way back, so the pistons are all the way back in the caliper, and then hopefully you'll be able to manoeuvre it side to side until you can pull the brake pads out. The inner pad is definitely more seized into the, uh, to the caliper than the outer one, so that is, that is fairly tight in there. If you get the warning wire for the brake pad warning, uh, we're going to put a new one of those on anyway, so if you break that to, or to cut that to get it out way, that's absolutely fine. Now, there is another little uh, way you could get these pads out if you're really, really struggling, you can't find any way to get them out. And we're taking the caliper off anyway, so you can take off the two bolts at the back of the caliper, Maneuver it round, then you can knock the pad all the way through, which gives you a lot more room and, you know, and, and it makes the job a lot easier. So I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the pad off, uh, take the caliper off, sorry, and then we'll show you how to get the pad out with the caliper off just to make things that bit easier. See, so I've uh, removed the two 21mm uh, spanner size bolts from the back where the, it mounts the caliper to the carrier. Now they are very, very tight, so you will need a decent bar on those to get them out. Then you can just pull the caliper off with the pad still attached and we've got a little box just to pop it on here look and then if you can just get a little bar or maybe even a bigger bar and then you'll be able to lever you'll lever the pad off the you might get somebody just to, to, to hold the caliper while you're doing this but you'll be able to lever the pad forwards there so that the outer bit of the pad will drop into the caliper and then the pad will be removed so you can see the corrosion on the end of the pad there which corrodes onto the calipers here so so we've got we've got this this pad out now but what you just need to be aware of whilst you're uh, using a bar to take the pad out just be careful of these pistons make sure you don't damage any of the seals but you know you can normally get a bar and just to pull them forward and then you know you can see the corrosion there it's unbelievable really but i'm just going to remove the disc then i'm going to bolt the caliper back onto the carrier with no disc there so we can get a file in and, and uh, clean up the caliper but i'll show you that in a couple of seconds I'm just going to remove the disc, so it was a, a Torx bit, a T50 Torx bit. Pop it in there, push it in nice and tight. Then you'll be able to remove the disc from the hub. I'm going to use a, um, a file just to clean up where the pads sit in the, in the caliper here. You can see how corroded it is. If I just scrape it there, you can see the corrosion build up. It's quite amazing, really. So you're going to be just cleaning up with a file, all four, top and bottom. The tops are never as bad as the, rear, as the lowers. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to push, make sure I've got all six pistons pushed back. So I've got the, um, the, the, the pad pusher back at all, but obviously you can see there, it only hits two pistons. So what you might need to do, clean up the pads, put your pads back in, then the pusher back inside, push the back to make sure all six pistons are pushed back right, right into the caliper before we go on any further. You can see that the, where the, the pads sit in the, the caliper is all nice and clean now. I mean, what I do is I just get the new pad and just slide it in to make sure it is nice and, uh, nice and free and it sits in the correct place. 
The, the great thing about remounting the caliper with the disc missing is that you can then got a real stable background so to get in with your file and clean it all up properly. It's very awkward with these sort of calipers with a, a short flexi. You really can't get into it to a really decent manner. So this is a great way of doing it. So then we'll unbolt the caliper now and then refit the disc. And before we fit the, uh, the new disc, we're just gonna get some emery cloth or a file or a wire wheel, whatever, whatever you've got, just to clean where the brake disc mounts to the hub it wants to be as clean as possible so that when the, when the disc sits on it's super super flat and then before we fit the disc we'll just put some copper grease on that as well so clean copper grease disc on okay you can see the difference visually in the two uh, two discs obviously that's just a solid disc and these are the the the, uh, the grooves and the drills now this one they do come in this sort of color. Now the customer's asked for this one to be painted silver, so we have painted this one silver prior to fitting. The benefits of having the drilled and slotted discs are um, the extra cooling, it does get rid of the dust a little bit better, so it just aids the braking. With these discs uh, being grooved and drilled, they only go on one way, so then this one will only go on one side. Now the way to tell this is because you can see the grooves facing that way, this one is going to be a right hand disc. So as, the, as it's traveling clockwise like that, the arrow is pointing to the rear. And then if I swap quickly to the other one, you can see as it is here, it's facing forward. So this one then wants to be fitted like this. As you can see, the paint that was on the, uh, on the disc from where the, uh, the customer painted the, the hub, uh, we've removed before we fit the disc. So once we pop the disc, I'll say a bit of copper grease on the mounting faces. Then you fit the disc on the studs, refit the mounting bolt, put a bit of copper grease on again, and then with a torque wrench, that one's torquing down to 35 newton meters. So let's get it all the way in. Might just have to hold the disc while you do it. Great, 35 newton meters, that's done. Okay, so now I'm going to refit the caliper. Now I'm going to swing the caliper back round, gently round the disc, and then bolt it back on with the two 21mm spanner bolts. Now these are fairly tight, they want torquing down to 282 newton meters. So once that's all done, it'll be time to refit the brake pads. Before I refit the brake pads, I'm just going to make sure that all the corrosion is out of all four of these holes for the pins and also out of the center brace. So when we put the new pins in, it's all nice and clean. And once I've got them all nice and clean, I'll normally get one of the pins, put some copper grease on it and just fiddle it around in each hole just to make sure that they've got copper grease in all the holes so it's all nice and uh, well lubricated before we put the pads back in. Okay, so the, uh, the outside pad is fitted, but this one you can see a bit better. Just put a bit of copper grease on the edge of the pads. Slide them in nice and gently, probably just working backwards and forwards a little bit just to get more copper grease on to make sure they're nicely well lubricated. And then we've got our stabilizing pin, which goes through the center. Two flats there that go into the little cutout in the caliper. Little M8 bolt in the back. Pop that in, tighten that up. Torque setting wise, that bolt, bolt an M8 bolt, I would imagine like to, um, 25 newton meters would be absolutely fine for that. Um, then we'll fit our spring clip, which goes like this. So we'll get a pin through the back of the caliper, pick up a pad all the way through into the side there. Then you pop that one down there. It's a little bit difficult to show this, but you push the spring clip back and push the next pin over so it goes over the spring, back through the pad and back through the hole. And say, so just put a bit of copper grease on these pins as well before you fit them. And then once that's tightened up, both your pins are in, just knock the back of the pin so that that spring clip sits all the way in the hole. You'll see it because the, the, the protruding pin at the end just protrudes the outside of the caliber here, just the pointy part. And then, then that's it, the pads are fitted. And then we'll need to fit the pad warning sensor wire. Here's the brake pad, the, the low brake pad warning uh, wire. So it just, the two little, the little metal clip in there just slides into the brake pad then you just push it in it clips into place and then it's pretty much a case of you follow 
the, the wire along and where it goes into all its little clips and clamps along the way you unclip one clip this new one in until it ends up at the front here we've taken off the wheel arch cover so you can see properly so the wire comes all the way through along here and that's the plug there so it's a little clip that goes into the inner wing pull that out unclip the wire plug the new one in and then that's it it's done we can put the inner wing back in okay so i'm just going to pop the wheel arch liner back in now we'll pop that in put all the clips and screws back in and then it'll be time to put the wheel back on and finish the job just before you put the wheel back on just check the center of the hub there just to make sure there's not too much buildup of corrosion if there is clean it out wire wheel or, or um, emery cloth then put some copper grease on put some copper grease on the mating surface and that's uh, time to put the wheel back on so we've popped the wheel back on uh, so we just need to torque it down. I mean, Land Rover suggests torquing it down to that four newton meters, 70 newton meters, and then 140 newton meters to finish off. So once that's done, we'll move on to the other side, and it's exactly the same to do, bar there's no warning wire on the other side, so it's just straight to this pads. So just check our brake fluid, make sure it's okay. Screw down the lid. Doesn't have to be too tight, but yeah, obviously it wants to be tight enough. Then we can replace the plastic trim. Put back our four plastic clips and then we're done.